Good morning. How's everyone doing? Uh, first, let's congratulate you guys because it's been just brutal here. May gray, June gloom, God. <laughs> this guy's got a ski cap on right here. It's been so bad. <laughs> All right, so it's a fitting topic of survival, right? It's like some, how do we get through it? We get through it together. And just kind of wanted to start right here. And uh, first, is, is everybody comfortable? Who's comfortable right now? All right, good. Survival is not about comfort. So for just a second, we're gonna do exactly what you shouldn't do. I want everybody to stand up and take out their phones. Stand up and take out your phones. Everyone's like, ugh. Stand up and take out your phones. Now we've played this game our whole lives. If you could be any animal, what animal would you be? One, just one word, what animal would you be? It's gotta be a real animal, write this in your phone. Email it to yourself, put it in notes. No ligers, no unicorns. It has to be a real animal, and when, when you're done doing that, then sit down so I know you're done. And you have about like four more seconds, so. Let's go, Chris Toombs. There we go. All right, good, thank you. All right. So we're, we're gonna come back to that in a little bit. That's called a cliffhanger. We're gonna come back to that in a little bit. What I wanted to do is just share a very quick parable, quick little story. And just imagine really fast that you're, you're all alone on a ledge of a pool. And you've never swam before. And you're just, you're standing there and you're freaking terrified. And, and you know that this time is different, that you're going to jump. And your heart is racing and you're panicking. And you leap. And gravity, of course, wins. And next thing you know, you're at the bottom of a pool and you're freaking out. And there's like a simple little moment of consciousness where you can feel your body coming back up. And you know, okay, I'm not going to die. Progress. And you come up and you grasp for air. And as you grasp for air, when you reach the surface, there are hundreds of other people in the pool. And you're like, oh, God, don't drown. Oh, God, don't dunk anybody. And they're like, oh God, don't drown. Oh God, don't dunk anybody. And that kicking and flailing slowly turns into strokes. And then there's that conscious moment where we're like, wow, I'm actually, I think I'm swimming. It's not pretty, but I'm swimming. And as it gets a little easier, you look out and on the other side of the pool, there's a guy in a raft. Is that guy there the whole time? Was, was he always there and he's coming towards you? Could be a woman, by the way, person in a raft. You're coming towards them. And they pick you up onto the raft. And the man points to all these other people that you didn't notice that were on the edge of the pool. And some of them are jumping in. And some of them are freaking out. Probably some of them are getting pushed in. And then you start pointing to other people who are swimming towards you in the raft. And you start helping people into the raft. And to me, this has sort of been the trajectory of my career, of how it started, very alone, very much by myself. Back in 1998, I, I got a chance to intern in New York City at a company called Messner Viteri Burger McNamee Schmetterer. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure everybody remembers Messner Viteri Burger McNamee Schmetterer. I came out of school with a portfolio. I wanted to be a writer. I did not get my first choice. I had to work my way up one side of the brain before I ever got a chance at the other side of the brain. Business development. Now, looking back, best thing ever. Not getting your first choice sometimes, best thing ever. But in my head, I knew I wanted to be a creative. So I worked my way up, wearing the button downs and the khakis, knowing I wanted to be a creative. I got to work on Universal Studios, Sharing Plow, Subway, until I finally got a chance to turn them in for a t-shirt and jeans. And back in 2002, notice the amount of years it took me to become a creative, I got to work on a brand called 1-800-COLLECT. There's like 95% of you have no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> nor should you, because you really only used 1-800-COLLECT when you were in jail <laughs> for collect calls. The whole concept here, this is Jamie Presley, was an angel that likes to save you a buck or two. And this was the beginning of my creative career. 
Again, it took me a long time to get into the creative department, but from 2002 to 2004, as my only goal was this, I got to travel all around the country, shooting different things for Subway and sharing plow and different cool things. And I remember there was a six week period where I was shooting in Vancouver, San Fran, and LA. And after each trip, I, had, I knew one couple down here in San Diego, and they're like, come down. So I came down. And I'm like, holy shit, you can live here? Why, where, where are the creative people? If Creative Mornings was back in 2004, it'd be like this seven people. <laughs> and like, look at this, look at, look at the community now. Well, in the first month that I got here, uh, I had an opportunity to start an agency uh, called Fish Tank. Does anyone know, has anyone heard of that agency? A few people, cool. Uh, I remember having a conversation with my dad who was like, so let me get this straight you're gonna leave Madison Avenue for the Mecca of advertising San Diego. <laughs> and I said the handful of words you should never say, Dad, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I didn't have a clue what I was doing. There was no business plan, there was nothing. So in 2004, this was our first office called a house. <laughs> See this guy back here, the skinny guy back here? This is one of my life raft mates, and I'm gonna embarrass him right now. Mike Fennessy, raise your hand. I don't know if you picked me up on the raft or if I picked you up on the raft, but man, it's been a fun ride. Uh, and this is how we started. Three years later, we thought we were so cool. I found this little comp of our, of our first website. As you could tell, it was just a comp. Laura mips some copy at the top. We're like, look at us, we're doing it. We have a website, it's 2007. <laughs> All right, pay close attention to the client list. Uh, Lemley, uh, Mercury, Green Zap. Has anyone heard of any of these brands? No, like half of them are out of business. So it didn't matter what I did in New York. We kind of started over. And it was a grind. But we believed in each other. 2009, we kind of got our first break with UNICEF, and it was with the, the TAP project, which was bringing clean water to the world. Pro bono. Gotta find your spots. 2010, we finally moved, we'd finally been in an office, about 15 of us, we got a chance to work with Pony Shoes, we parlayed that in 2011 with Puma Golf. And in 2012, we merged Fish Tank with Bailey Gardner, it was a sort of a perfect combination of social media and PR on the Paley Gardner side and uh, with Fish Tank, it was the creative side. Came together with a new idea. Uh, and very fast, if you've seen this, I'm not sure if anyone's seen this, but Human Motorcycles in 13, this was for uh, Save the American Inventor. The campaign's actually in the Library of Congress. That's our ad on the floor of Congress, pretty cool. 2016, Major League Baseball and the All-Star Game, 17. Can you guys see that back there? This is the mayor of Funner, California. Mayor Hoff is what we like to call him. So you've seen those Funner, California billboards anywhere. That's Harris Resort and Casino, which is on tribal land. And we got to go to the board and got to go to get them to actually change the name to Funner, California. So if you actually Google Funner, California, Funner, California will come up. Imagine like the green sides, 12 miles, Valley View Casino. 14 miles, Funner, California. Pretty, pretty cool campaign. And then just last week, we got to launch the US Ski and Snowboard logo, uh, the new rebrand for them. So that was a lot of fun, uh, our contribution to country. Now, the point of all that, this is, that's, that's not about me, right? That's about you. That, this is about you. And I think, think about where you are in your career and when sometimes you're in the survive mode and sometimes you're in between and sometimes you're in thrive mode And I want to ask just a really quick question. So if you think you're in thrive mode right now, raise your hand Awesome That's hard and it, <laughs> that's hard It's hard and it's hard. It's hard to admit out here because like I'm in thrive mode, bro. I'm killing it <laughs> Just crushing it <laughs> who, who thinks they're somewhere in between? Yep what about survive mode? Yeah, that's, that's, hard, that's hard to admit, but it's honest. Now, I want to congratulate survive mode people, because that means you're alive. It means you, there's something going on in here, and you're fighting, and you're kicking, and maybe there's something bigger that you're trying to go after. I think the real problem 
is if you're numb. If you're still on the ledge of the pool, then that's a problem. And if you're on the ledge of the pool, that's cool, but ask yourself why. And how do you leap? How do you jump? So the question, how do you create a survive to thrive mentality? And, and for me, I think with a courageous purpose. You've got to find that courageous purpose for you. And I'm, I'm not going to focus too much on purpose, which is the word du jour. I'm going to focus on the concept of courage. And this is what I've been studying for the last two years. And ironically, most business leaders don't think courage is for them. In fact, most people don't think courage is for them. They don't like the word. Most of us are not rewarded in the workplace to be courageous. Most of us are rewarded on annual reviews. You're actually rewarded not to stick your neck out. Just get to the next review, get my little bump, we're good. We can stay in San Diego, yes. <laughs> and, and business leaders, of course, they, they don't like the word. They think it's careless, impulsive. They want to go to their boards where we have a real plan, strategic. 18-month plan, we'll be where we want to be. So they don't like the word. When I actually I talk to my mom about courage, she'll be like, oh, that's courageous. <laughs> she means that's stupid. <laughs> Thank you, mom. So how do you fix this? Uh, the definition in the dictionary is not our friend. It's the ability to do something that's frightening. I don't know many people that really want to do that. I don't find it useful at all. Um, in fact, when you actually need to be courageous, that's the last thing you're thinking about is courage. You're thinking about my boss is an idiot or I have a deadline or I'm freaking out and am I gonna be ready? And your brain plays tricks on you. You're not thinking this is the time for me to be courageous. But courage can be your competitive advantage. You just have to learn how to do it. And so I kind of set out to see if I could come up with a definition that's useful that you can actually use in your day to day life. And I started interviewing some of the most brave people on the planet. I interviewed astronauts. By the way, when an astronaut sits down with you, he's like, so what makes you qualified to write a book about courage? Touche astronaut. <laughs> well, astronaut, I've been behind the scenes in marketing my whole career. <laughs> Obviously, I'm the perfect candidate for this. I've interviewed Navy SEALs. I've interviewed uh, you know, flight attendants who are trained for terrorism. Just really brave people. I interviewed just bullish business leaders. Uh, Eric Ryan, the, the co-founder of Method. Or this is Russell Weiner, who's the president of Domino's Pizza. When he came on board, he was a CMO. The stock price was at $2.41. Today it's at $241. This is cheese, sauce, and dough. He didn't hire or fire anyone in the first year. Kept the exact same team. If you ask Russell what business they're in, they're like, we're a technology business. Okay, you can order a pizza with an emoji. I get it. They have a, a delivery truck, perfect for pizza, and they're expanding all over the world. Bravo. And then what I didn't realize was how much we're the problem and how can we unlock ourselves from ourselves. You know, if I talk about what my purpose is now, as crazy as it may sound, it's, it's liberate with courage. When my alarm goes off in the morning, you know you can change that screen. That's liberate with courage is what I have, so I see that every morning to remind me of what my purpose is. And I need that. I need to train my brain for that. So I talked to the, you know, immunologists and people that study the brain. Has anyone heard of a company called Neurogym? Jim for Your Brain, based here in San Diego. John Asaraf, he also wrote The Secret, or co-wrote The Secret, wrote The Answer. Awesome books, pick it up. And from all that, you kind of throw it in the soup, and I wanted to come up with a definition that we could all utilize. And it's very simple. It's knowledge plus faith plus action equals courage. Now, you're never gonna have every bit of knowledge you need to make a call, which is why faith matters. When I say faith, this isn't religion, right? It's inner belief, it's intuition. And so, the more knowledge you get on the topic, hopefully, the more you believe. And then, do or do not, right? The old Yoda, there is no try. It's like, well, what, what's the holdup? And, and again, we're playing tricks on ourselves. Ironically, two of three in any direction is not courage. Knowledge plus faith with no action is paralysis. 
Faith and action without knowledge, we're back to my mom's definition. That's reckless. And then knowledge and action, if you don't feel that faith, that's called status quo. You just contributed to the noise. So it needs to be all three. And my hope is as you start to think through this, okay, how much knowledge do I have on a topic? Do I believe it? What am I going to do about that? Another simple way to say this, think, feel, do. Okay, back to the top, the animal game. So who picked a bird? Yep, that's about right. We always want what we can't have. Everybody wants to fly. <laughs> we just fly away from my problems. <laughs> Did anyone pick a dog? A couple dog lovers? Yeah, an unconditional love. I always said if one of the genders had a tail, the world would be a, a much easier place to understand. You would know exactly where you stood with everybody. <laughs> How about a, a bear? Grizzly? Anybody grizzly? All right. Nate and Sherman, where are you guys? You better be raising your hands right now. All right, l this is, this is a, 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 a kind of a joke slide because I love when Nate goes through his, and here are our sponsors, Grizzly, click, 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 like right through Grizzly, but Nate, you guys have done an amazing job. Where's Nate's parents? You got, I'm telling you, yeah, bravo. It, it, it took somebody like Nate to make this happen. And I know he'll, he's embarrassed by that, but it's true. Cats, independent creatures. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. All right, look, the, the only problem I have is that they, they chase the little shiny light and they'll never get it. That's it, okay? I'm not hating on your answer. Uh, obviously, you're probably going to think I'm talking about the lion, right? When it comes to courage, it's about the lion. For those millennials in the room, this is from The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> it's not a new movie. Did anybody pick this guy? <laughs> yeah, right. All right, by the way, I also don't pick this guy, but we're talking about survivor, survival here, right? These guys could survive anything, the old... Nuclear holocaust. Uh, and there's three insights I want to talk about here. First, in Latin, uh, cockroach means blada, which is shun the light. These are nocturnal little buggers, and they're not afraid of the darkness. And for all of us, we like to stay in the light, don't we? We prefer the light. We prefer where it's safe. We prefer where we can see. For those of you who know the hero's journey, Joseph Campbell, it's here, you know, it's about going down into the abyss. There lies the treasure. I bet that's hard to do. That's the knowledge and the faith without the action piece. So how do you go to that dark space? Well, I think you need to be prepared to go down there. And again, this is a little shot of a night cockroach here. And, um, the whole idea is, if you don't know what you stand for, how do you really know when to take a stand? And I would like to see us put in the hard work to understand ourselves even more. So I believe core values are not eye rolls, they're how the exceptional roll. And this is not about businesses, this is about you, it's about me. We all think we know ourselves, but have you really put in the hard work? Oh yeah, I stay I have family. Friends, treat yourself like a brand. Put in the hard work. Be hyper aware of yourself. For me, there's four core values for, that, I, that I live my life by. And this, this is like a two-year audit. That's how nuts I am with this stuff. The first one is playfulness. So, you know, I, I take my work seriously, but I don't take myself that seriously. It's, it's number one on my list. Yeah, I can't work with people that are just super serious. It just doesn't work for me. And I think playfulness also, we have it pretty good. We live in San Diego. Granted, it's one more day of uh, June gloom. Not so bad. It could be a lot worse, right? We could be in the White House right now. <laughs> My superpower is creativity. You know, I, I say I'm not a businessman. I'm a creative businessman. And it's the power of the two. Every businessman should be, or, or businesswoman should be a creative business person. 
and figure out a way to inject creativity in their business. That is, that is one of your secret weapons. Probably not surprising, courage is on my list. I like to work with people that push themselves, that want to liberate from where they are, that want to liberate from the competition or from paralysis. And then the fourth one is excellence. And sometimes I really hate that this is on my list. Right, but it holds me, it keeps me honest. I mean, it would be nice to just coast. But my take is, I don't know how long I'm here, and why wouldn't I go for it? Why wouldn't I make a, take a big shot? So these are my four. It, it makes it really easy for me to decide when I go down into the darkness. It's like Eminem, my words are weapons. I go down with these four. All right, insight number two, yeah, ew. When was the last time you saw one of these guys alone? Never, if there's one, there's not, there's not one, right? If you see one, you'll see many. Very simple, once you know who you are, go find your raft mates. But this is not just coworkers, it's not just family. Declare to your mentor, hey, I can learn a lot from you. Be vulnerable. I'm trying to get to a different place. I want to be better. I think the way to get from survive to thrive is to surround yourself with people that teach you or, or believe in you. You don't have to go down there alone. You should know yourself, right? I, I remember talking to one of my mentors about something, an idea, and it was like, I think I spoke for 45 minutes, and he was just drinking a beer. And when I finally finished, he's like, you are a very lonely man. That's not what I was going for right there. <laughs> All right, if you're a freelancer, raise your hand. If you're an owner, raise your hand. You're a very lonely man or woman. <laughs> Just like me. It's hard. It's hard to be vulnerable. It's hard to trust people. But you have to declare. You gotta find your raft mates. And there's only so many spots on the raft. So, you know, start being open. Find your people. And those people should share in the same values that you've got. There's third, one final one, and that is if you actually chopped off a cockroach's head, they could, they could survive for a month. If it wasn't the fact that they didn't have a mouth to eat, they probably could be here forever. I don't know what their purpose would be. Well, how do we get out of our heads? I mean, how, how, honestly, how much do we hold ourselves up thinking about stuff and talking ourselves out of stuff? So you gotta get down into the heart, get into the gut, the intuition spaces. And, and this, is, this, is, this is the, big, the biggest problem. This is like first base. The way we're wired paralyzes us. It's, it's designed to keep you safe. It's like a big bubble. Uh, anyone heard, you know, hey, freeze, fight, or flight, right? 95%, the experts say 95% of us are in freeze or flight, 5% fight. So let's say freeze or flight, and these five are fight. So if you learn to fight, that's a competitive advantage, right? Because you already know that everybody over here is like, whatever your excuse is, oh, I can't do it today. And these five are going great. And if we all know that speed is a difference, right, making faster decisions is a difference, and this is a competitive advantage. Uh, one of the interviews is with Nicholas Alp, he's a PhD from Cambridge. We have to accept the limitations of our ancient heritage. We have to come up with strategies that help us handle bad emotions and fear. There's a famous proverb that fear and courage are brothers. You actually cannot get to courage without first channeling it through fear. But what most of us do is we suppress fear versus address it. F fear is your friend. I like FOMF, actually, fear of missing fear. <laughs> go, go find a fear. If you don't have a fear, go find one and know it. And then as a Seinfeld fan, I'm like, cool, I'm in the fear shrinkage business. That's pretty cool. So what's your fear? What's going to keep you going? So all of this is what I've been working on the last two years. I'm actually trying to create an, uh, a courage training system. Uh, yes, shameless promotion time. So I've been, I've been working on this, and sometime in the next year, and I'll let you know with the power of social media, 
um, coming out with a book called Return on Courage. And I believe ROC is how you maximize your ROI. I think any business being or brand can return on the Courage platform. That means you. And I also think it's pretty clear that we have to repair the word courage and return it to the business lexicon. So if there's like a word stock market, I'm buying really low on courage and I wanna return it where it belongs. So for those who follow emotional intelligence, basically the same thing. Oh, it's a soft skill. Now Harvard's writing about it. It's the difference between ordinary leaders and extraordinary, extraordinary leaders. And I, I think it's the same once you learn how to be courageous. The big thing is you need to know how to do it first. It's sort of like self-defense class, right? If somebody knocks you out, you didn't know how to do it, you couldn't defend yourself, that's a problem. So the whole idea is how do you learn how to be courageous so when you actually need it, in a moment you're like, oh, ding, knowledge, faith, and action. That, it's happening right now. I'm tapping into this right now. Now, I don't have... Uh, another hour to go through the training, but I do have sort of five things to leave you with. And first is just, just know yourself. Be hyper aware of what matters to you. Download any core values assessment and just viscerally go through that list and, and write down the eight, the eight words that pop out to you and then sleep on it. And then come back to them like, eh, this one I kind of wish was me, but it, it's not me. Cut it to five. Write a paragraph on each one. Put them in the order from most important to fifth most important. Start to train yourself, because what's gonna happen is once you have those locked, you're gonna be like, oh, you know what? Susie's always negative. Why am I spending my time feeling bad about myself? So it's gonna help you decide who you spend your time with. And yes, lock in on your purpose. What's your purpose? What's your courageous purpose that you're working on right now? You know, again, for Fish Tank, it was we want to be nationally relevant from this market. Idea, pretty much the same. Two, declare your raft mates. Don't be afraid to, like, whether it's a parent or a coworker or a peer. Who's on your raft? R write those people down. Write them. Call them. Let them know, hey, I kind of need a mentor, I'm afraid to ask, but you're kind of my mentor. Wow, okay, let's go to lunch. Get out of your head, get out of your way, trust your gut, trust your heart. When you have the first two locked, it makes that third one easier, right? When you know yourself and you surround yourself with people like you, but who have different skill sets, and you share the same purpose, it's like, I, I don't know, I don't know, but I got, I, we gotta do it, we gotta do it. Take courageous action. Remember, knowledge, faith, and action. Think, feel, do. You're never gonna have every bit of knowledge you need to make a call. And then five, stay on purpose. Whatever your courageous purpose is, stay there and, and know that the journey is the deal. Everybody's always, where, where are you going? To enjoy the ride. Because here's what's going to happen for, for people that are like, you know, one of, one of the things I say about myself is I'm patiently relentless. I'll get, I'm going to get there. And then I'm going to get there and I'm going to go, yes. And the next day I'm like, now what? So enjoy the ride. Find your thing. Stay on that path. And ultimately, what I've learned is, is courage is a journey word. So if you, if you are doing something courageous, it's to land on something meaningful. And what's meaningful to you may be different than what's meaningful to somebody else. But if it's courageous, usually you're gonna land and like, wow, that was awesome. What a ride. So that's, that's all I got for you today.